Damo J5 in the building. <laughs> Tets is in the building. Tets is you you born and raised or you moved down there? What's 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 up with Texas, bro? I done moved to Texas. I got a lot of family down there. Raised up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, but went down there to Texas. Okay. Houston. Okay, you from the home of the Prince, bro. Okay, okay. All right, so Minnesota, yes, man. What, what was life like for you up in Minnesota before you moved down to Texas? I mean, it was pretty decent. You know, I just couldn't stand the cold, though, but it was all right, you know. As always. Growing up, a little trouble here and there. So, you know, bored, teenager, but, you know, got it together and had kids and grew up. And now I moved to Texas because it was just a better opportunity. Okay, okay. Now, I want to, on on a serious note, did you just move down to Texas recently or you been down there? No, I've been down there for a few years now. Okay, okay. So you, you, you wasn't around doing all that Floyd, George Floyd mess that that was happening i had literally left after george floyd literally oh my god when george floyd situation happened we we you know me and my family we left it, 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 was, it got bad up there man it, it just it just turned all the way around now, I, I did my commentary on it and i look i feel bad i really do my 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 thought process on on the whole thing was was all over the place. Number one, knowing that George Floyd was giving them resistance at first, but then knowing that there was like a gang of officers, including two on the other side that we didn't see in the video. One of them could have came up to old boy and be like, look, man, we got it. Raise up off his neck. You know what I'm saying? Or or the people that was that was recording. Like, I don't know. I, I said something to the fact that if it was me, I probably would have put the camera down and I probably would have stepped to the cop. But then again, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. No, I, I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? But you know, just just seeing them being being manhandled like that kind of remind me of the movie, uh, Do the Right Thing. Give it up! Right. 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 Just give it down! Come on! Give it up! I don't know if you hipped the, that joint back in the day, but one of the characters, the big black guy, the officer came behind him, put him in the chokehold, and they 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 wouldn't release him, and he, he got killed right there on the spot. Same thing with uh, George Floyd. So my my feelings was was all over the place. And you just and and you say you just you just left. So what was your thought process on it? Um, well, my thought process was, process with it was. Uh, he wasn't my, like, close, immediate friend, but one of my partners I grew up with was best friends with him. He wasn't a bad guy, so it was like for that situation to happen, it was like, that's crazy. And and the other crazy part of that situation, the officer that killed him worked in the club with him. They were security. You know, a lot of the clubs up here, they got private security, and then they also had the police there as well. They worked together, so it was kind of like, that was some shady stuff. But it hurt my feelings how they did him because... If it's him by himself and three, four, or five cops, did, what did y'all need to do all this for? And then the second part is, I mean, like a lot of people probably felt was, why nobody stopped that from happening? Like, I know, right. I understand you don't want to get yourself in a mess, but it's also like right is right and wrong is wrong. Like, Man. I feel if I was there, I probably wouldn't have watched that happen. I would have probably went to jail with him or, you know, probably been in the same situation, but I probably would have, I would have did something to stand up for what, you know, right is right and wrong is wrong. You know? I got you. I got you. Rest in peace to the boy. You know what I'm saying? It's it's messed up. It's a good thing that his family was able to able to get something out of his uh, out of his wrongful death. So I, I'm glad that happened for him. So all right, all right. So yeah. that, where where you at down in Texas though? Um, I'm staying down there in Houston. Oh, okay, 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 Houston. Okay, all right. So man, let's let's let's, let's go ahead and uh, get into it, man. So you 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 minding your business just. 
this driving down the way, man, and all of a sudden a car just come out of nowhere and you just pretty much took it out. Like, take us back to that day, man. What, what happened? Tell you from the jump, I was uh, I was uh, running down I-35 North, coming out of Kansas City, uh, and kind of coming up to the city of Cameron, uh, Missouri. Just cruising, minding my business, just you know, a normal day. Um, it was two cars that passed me. If anybody that watched the video, it was two sports cars. I think a Mustang, like a Corvette or like a Camaro or something, that passed me. They kind of hopped in front of me, and they were getting off at the next exit. But um, the truck that came up on the side of me that caused the wreck, he was trying to chase them down. He had a road rage incident with those two drivers. I tried to get a little bit more footage, but my uh, safety director ain't called me back yet because he was trying to deal with a lot of stuff but maybe about 15 20 seconds prior from that when those two cars hopped in front of me they gave they threw a finger out the window and i thought it was to me but i was in my mind like i ain't do nothing so why they flicking me off and then lo and behold that's when that truck was coming up and they were getting off because they was tired of him chasing them and what he wanted to do was get them he wanted to chase them down and he was basically like leaving me as collateral damage of doing what he wanted to do in a road rage incident after he hit me, I mean, when I seen him swerving to me, I was thinking like I'm going to swerve the ditch, but I was thinking like this is going to be a catastrophe if I go off in that ditch with him. So I just, you know, put the training in my mind, keep your lane, you know, got do what you got to do. Plus, I got kids at the end of the day. I got I to gotta go home to my family and my kids. So I kept the truck truck straight. Uh, cause my bad. I kept the truck straight. And when I finally came to a stop, I got out of the truck. You know, I obviously got out the truck. I'm on the phone with 911, running to the truck. Like, I'm thinking in my mind, these people are dead. The driver of the truck was out of the truck when I got there. The two guys he was chasing down came back and helped us get them out of the truck, the rest of the family. I got his wife out, which was the passenger. Everybody seen the video, hold on. And then some other pedestrians and you know, bystanders came and got the daughter and then the son-in-law out. Immediately after we got them out, the son-in-law and the dad got into it because from my judgment, from what he was saying to his dad, he was trying to basically tell the dad, don't do this. You don't need to be chasing him. It's not even worth it type you know, situation. And then after that, you know, everybody's still kind of hysterical. We asked everybody, okay, kind of get information so we can tell the ambulance what to prepare for. The guy proceeds the call for somebody to come pick him up. After that, when he hung up from the phone, the guy that he was chasing, he yelled at him and said, so you the guy that I was chasing and had, you know, who flicked me off. But the guy still was kind of like trying to be on some angry stuff for some reason. I don't know why. And then, you know, after everybody got there to stay patrol and the ambulance, he admitted to fault right off that. Um, all the witnesses' stories were the same from what my camera said, that he just turned in front of, turned into me. But he hit my side of uh, my uh, steer tire where it started at. And he admitted to fault. He wrecked my truck not too bad, but that's kind of the gist of what happened. Didn't, didn't expect it. Didn't know it was going to happen. I had a split second to think on how I'm going to react to it. And it was just like, what I figured, stay in my lane. Truck drivers go through that all the time. That's that's on every, well, it's on the back of my mind. I've been in a few accidents in my career. Nothing as traumatic as yours. So let me ask you this, man. The, the, the driver of the car that, that caused the accident, he had a family? in there and he was and he was still on some road rage stuff trying to catch up with the with the two cars yes that's what baffled me because when he got out of the vehicle he didn't proceed to check on his family he didn't do anything he proceeded to still try to conversate with the people he was you know having the, the feud with and i'm just like this is crazy like it really showed how much anger that man had over him where he could have took me out so wait a minute this man put his whole family in danger near death because he was flipped off am i am i under am, am i trying to understand that yes in oh a nutshell God. yes so you said son-in-law his wife so what it was it was four or three people in the car it was four people in the vehicle um him his wife his daughter and his son-in-law in the video his wife was the passenger that was holding on and then behind the wife in the uh, passenger right side was his daughter, and then he was in the driver's seat, and his son-in-law was behind him. I I don't get it. I, I don't get it. I'm 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 surprised that the way that 
they came and side swiped and turned over and rolled over. I'm I'm surprised people walked away from that. The wife and the daughter? We all were surprised. Cause when I called 911, I had them on the phone. They also said over the phone, bring the fatality vehicle. So they just heard semi in the car and thought right away. There's no way people were walking with. Them. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, D man, I'm 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 sorry that 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 you had to experience that, man. I, I know the adrenaline is rushing. Everybody's in shock, including yourself. I mean, what what was your feelings, man? Soon as I made contact. I thought they were dead. When it made that first, like, roll, I, I know I was not at fault for the accident, but in my mind, I was like, I just killed four people. Right. That's that's on your conscience. That was on my conscience. Like, and then I was scared. Like, well, maybe if there's more kids in the back, like, I'm in my mind thinking so many things. Like, I done killed some kids. I done killed this family. What can I have done to prevent this? I'm trying to call the police. I'm calling my family. Like, it, it was so much running through my mind because all I kept playing in my mind was, what should I have done, even though I knew it wasn't my fault? It, it, it sat with me for that day, that night. I woke up in the morning with um, with uh, my job, and, you know, he, you know, my boss, my safety manager, the owner of the company, you know, checking on me, and it was just, it was just on my mind. Then because even though stuff happens on the road, it's not your fault. It still just sits bad that you could have potentially called or killed somebody. Like, I'm not out here to go to work to get into a wreck and then somebody die in the end of the situation. We see accidents on the road involving cars and semis every day. And I know some of these drivers that be driving with their S on their chest, like, it never happened to me. It will never happen to me. You know what I'm saying? But it happened to you. D, how can you, now, now that it happened to you, you get back to your truck. The, the officer says, okay, you cool. You're good to go. Uh, if we need anything else, we'll call you type deal. You get back in your truck. Are, are you able to, to get back on the road after after something like that? As literally, I have PTSD. I ain't going to lie to you because um, when I got the wreck, you know, my truck, State Patrol, let me bring my truck to the next um, truck stop so they wouldn't have to tow it and get no bill. Um, the company, my company ended up having a wrecker come all the way back from Texas with a spare truck for me and brought it all up there to give me a truck to at least, you know, get my load to Minnesota. Um, me and my boss discussed, I'm going to come to Minnesota, spend time with my family, you know, calm my mind down. But from Missouri to Minnesota, I had straight PTSD. Any car that got by me didn't hold their lane. It just immediately threw a trigger in my mind, like, here we go again. Um, I also actually, literally leaving from there, I got there, took my job, maybe about nine hours, gave me another truck. So they got there about nine o'clock at night. I had a reset o'clock after all that. I drove to Des Moines to my auntie house to get some good rest. Woke up that morning, hit the highway to get to Minneapolis and got on the highway, got out of Des Moines. And a car literally did the same thing in the video to me, but they just didn't make contact, but they got close. And luckily, I had another lane to merge over to not cause another wreck. And I literally called my job and told them, if I get into another wreck from this or anything, I'm done for the week. I'm, I'm just done driving because I couldn't take two of those. I feel you. I, I was going to ask you, how how does how how does this outlook now after this accident? And praise God, nothing happened to him. But how does this accident resonate with you with your career going forward? I'm still going to drive truck, but it's just going to make me more cautious to things. And I'm not going to say it's going to make me more cold hearted, but it's just going to make me more like, hey, if you do some crazy things and you see this truck and I'm 80,000 pounds and you do this, I can't feel too bad because if you do something reckless like that, I got a family, so I can't too much, you know, dwell on it. Like, this was an a, a avoidable situation, you know. I'm going to drive truck. I'm going to try to, you know, pay attention a little bit more. I mean, I do pay attention all the time, check my mirrors and try to, you know, predict what's going to make happen and, you know, do what truckers do. We got to, you know, think ahead. But it's just definitely going to also put me on edge more to be like. After this accident that, that happened to you, D-Man, a lot of us drivers are lack, lackadaisical, if, if that's a good word that I should use. And I and wonder why I say that is because I see a lot of drivers driving with their phones in their hands, their feet up on the dashboard, not paying attention and stuff like that, man. After after you've been in this kind of accident and you 
you was zero focus. How do you feel about now seeing drivers doing live feeds while they're driving, just being this overall distracted? How how did that make you feel now after you've been in a in an accident like that? To me, it, even before the accident gets on my nerves, it's bothersome because you know you're putting everybody in jeopardy yourself, people around you. We driving these trucks with all this this weight. It's reckless to me. Especially I be seeing the guys with the feet on the dash, guys watching movies, um, the women watching movies, texting, the men texting. It's just it's 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 it's, it's crazy. Um, it just it shouldn't be it shouldn't be there. This this not the industry for that. Not to throw shots at at, at you know automatic drivers because my truck is a Kmart W nine hundred, and what I noticed a lot is. The drivers who have that manual or drive manuals tend to pay a little more attention. So guys with the you know the with the with the with the long noses and the real expensive trucks, they kind of tend to pay more attention. And, and I'm not gonna say all automatic drivers are bad, but it seemed like ever since they started allowing this automatic stuff, people's focus, people's attention just went down the drain, and it it, it baffles me because I I see idle hands, bro. Idle hands. Idle. Man, it, it's crazy. D, thank you for saying that because I, I've been saying that for years. A lot of guys have been coming back like, oh, no, they, that is, it's just because they're bad drivers, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, well, if, if, if you had something to do with your right hand, which is gear shifting, then you don't have, you have any, to pay attention. You're going to have to you pay have attention. To. You're going to have to pay attention. You're going to need to know what, what even if you're floating gears, you're still going to need to know what gear you in, you need to downshift, all that. And if you, and if you, if you doing something with your hands, they're not idle. You're focused. You're paying attention. Oh, you got your radio on. You got your podcast on. You're not watching a movie because your hands is moving, bro. I, I've been saying that. I've been, I've been saying that, bro. Like, yo, if, if if they had something to do with their hands, i.e. shifting and good stuff like that, they they will be a little bit more focused than what they are now. They get bored. I'm gonna have to I'm I, I hate throwing it out there. And I I do too. I, I get bored also, but I know I, I know I gotta stay focused. Oh, I can't be I, I can't be testing on the phone. I can't be watching a movie. I can't be uh uh on a live feed, having a whole conversation with the people in the text because you're you even though the even though the camera's not on you, you're you're still interacting with the with with the, with the chat, so you're still being distracted regardless. So I'm gonna say this from personal experience: when I I drove automatic and manual truck, I was so much more distracted driving automatic than I am in in, in my Kenwood. And it's it's a fact that when I didn't have to you know shift gears and be in the right gear and have to pay attention to that, my attention to the driving was horrible. And I noticed ever since I got back into driving manual, I pay attention to everything what's ahead of me. I I, I pay attention to way what's ahead of me. Four, five, six cars ahead of me. Um, I'm making sure of everything because, you know, to me, when you're in the manual, your your reaction time and your braking time, I feel like it's a little bit, you know, even a little bit longer. It's, it's, it's a lot. And that is no diss or no shade to automatic drivers because I'm on some cool trucks sometimes and you don't want to be switching gears. But that's just what I noticed and how I personally went through that and seen the difference. Well, D, I appreciate you coming on to the Lockout Man channel and and sharing your your experience with me, man. I, it's, it was great conversating with you. The story, the 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 accident, everybody survived. They, they that's a miracle, bro. Like that don't happen. <laughs> somebody would have been, yeah, somebody would have been unalive. But God was on your side that day, man. And and. And to the driver, regardless of the fact that you put your family, bro, in danger just by being distracted and try to try to catch the guys that flipped you off, you you caused you 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 caused the accident that could have potentially killed everybody in the car, including yourself, bro. Before we get on up out of here, you wasn't at fault or anything like that. Unfortunately, it might be on your PSP, but you you was deemed not at fault 
What about the driver? Uh, was you able to get any information about him as far as he's going to be charged? Is he is his insurance going to cover for your your truck and all like that? Did you get any information on that part? In the state of Missouri, with injury accidents and stuff like that, I guess they don't give out paperwork or tickets or anything. It's just all online, and then they do the investigation, and then you don't hear from there. We got all his information, all that. He admitted to fault, so it really wasn't even an investigation at that because he admitted to he admitted to everything he did, and then the state patrol talked to witnesses and everything that he admitted to. They the stories co- uh, corroborated. So did really, you, it's just now an insurance deal. Did 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 he get cited? Not that I know of on scene. I, everybody got rushed to the hospital, and uh, after they talked to him, they put him in the hospital I and mean, ambulance with his wife to send him and his wife to the hospital. So I don't think they gave nothing right then and there. But you know, that state patrol officer probably got to still go through some more investigation, call more witnesses, and then I don't know if they're going to cite him in the mail, subpoena him to court, or I don't know how that's going to work. But from the video, from the statements, and the witnesses, you know, he's at fault and he agreed to that. He's at fault. So really just insurance deal now. Luckily for my company, they got, we, we, we don't wait for insurance. They're going to just go get it fixed. And whenever the insurance comes in, cashes is out for it. And that's what they're going to do. Yeah, that's, that's what's up, man. Well, D man, again, I, amazing story, man. I, I'm just surprised. You just, you, you just don't hear of an ending like that everybody survived everybody went to the hospital the driver wasn't even deemed at fault what i'm saying usually you hear stories like that like well the driver had to go to uh, get uh, drug tested and and then we're gonna have to put you on a safety hold because we're trying to investigate if you kind of slip the corner just about an inch or 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 go and check the cameras and see what you was doing at the time was your eyes on the road. It's it's crazy, man, that that a story like yours don't happen, man. And I'm I'm glad it did. So and I'm I'm glad you gave me the opportunity to to hear the story and to talk to you and to get to know you a little better, man. I messed with Minnesota.